Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our District 103 Toastmaster Senior Advisor Webinar Series session. I am your facilitator for today's session. I am Cassandra Diva of Dialogue Lee. I am past district director for District 103 Toastmasters. This is a session that I typically facilitate for District 103 club members, club leaders, and district leaders once a month. The D103 Senior Advisor webinar series focuses on various topics. The topics that I select are for the benefit of helping our clubs to have better club quality, helping our members to learn more about Toastmasters, and helping our leaders, whether at the club or the district level, to have knowledge that can be beneficial for inside and outside of your club. Today, we're focusing in on the topic of the executive committee. Every club has a club executive committee, and that's because we have club officers. In a moment, we're going to have an opportunity to dive a little bit deeper into the ideas of the executive committee. We'll also have the chance to do a mock leadership meeting, if you will, or a mock executive committee meeting as well. And as course, as we go through the process, you are more than welcome to ask your questions, make your comments. It'll be an interactive process for you. The chat box is available for any questions as we're going along the way. Therefore, feel free to put any questions or any comments inside of the chat box. You are also able to use the reaction icons as well. Feel free if there's something that's resonating with you, you can use the round of applause, the thumbs up, the heart, whichever reaction icon you have access to, you are more than welcome to use it throughout the session. For the Q&A portion, I typically will make certain, I'll pause in the content, to touch bases with you to see if you have any questions. Yet, if you have a question for me and I haven't yet gotten to the place where the Q&A is happening, feel free to use the reaction icon of the raised hand feature. That'll get my attention pretty quickly. It'll also let me know that you have a question or that you wanna make a comment. And that again, will give you the opportunity to have the floor. As a matter of fact, let's test out using a few of the reaction icons right now. If you have the raised hand feature, go ahead and put that up for me. That will at least put you closer or move, uh, rearrange my gallery, if you will. And it gives me the ability to see you. Great. Look at that. Everyone who has it, if you are able to use it, that's wonderful. And of course, if you don't have the raised hand reaction icon, you can still use the chat box as well. From time to time, I'll be hearing from you meaning you'll be able to be by microphone, you'll be able to speak verbally, we won't have to rely solely on typing things inside of the chat box. As I said before, I like these sessions to be interactive, and it gives everyone an opportunity to engage with each other. Thank you everyone for testing out your raised hand feature. I am now going to make certain that I remove those reaction icons, and that way, we now have a fresh gallery, if you will. As I said before, this is interactive. Therefore, let's find out who's here, what club you're representing, and what you're hoping to get from the program. I know that I heard from a few individuals before, yet they will get the opportunity to share again with the new individuals that came into the room. So let me start with Koshal. I'm going to start with you. Go ahead and let everyone know what club you're representing and what brought you here today. This is Koshal Gupta. I am in, in EPA Toastmasters Club 4501. I'm also the area director for Area 83 in Division F. What brought me here today is wanting to learn more how officers can work together more effectively so that I can take these ideas to when I do the president's makeup officer training uh, in early 2022. Sounds good. Thanks so much, Kosho. Everyone feel free to use a reaction icon to show your appreciation for Kosho sharing his information for being here today and who he is and which club he's representing. Next, let's have Paul share 
who, which, who he is, what club he's representing, and what brought him here today. Thank you, Cassandra. I am with Toastmasters of Palos Heights. I'm the president for this term, and I am here to learn from those that know better than I do ways that we can use things that we can use to accelerate the journey of our club to be a top club. Fantastic. And I think Paul won't be by himself on thinking of ways to make the club a top club. So thanks, Paul, for sharing your reason for being here. And everyone, again, feel free to use that reaction icon to let Paul know your appreciation. Dushan, go ahead next. Let everyone know what brought you here. Hi, my name is Dushan Mosley. I'm the South Division Director. And I came here to learn more. I had to interface with my area directors and sometimes interface with the club officers. And I just want to make sure I'm in line with what the club officers are getting so that I can talk to them more effectively. Sounds like a plan. And thank you, Dushan, for serving as a district leader. I know you and Koshu this year are serving as district leaders uh, for District 103. It's great to have both of you here today because not only are you gaining information for your own clubs, you're also able to pass it on at that district level as well. Kudos to both of you. All right. Okay, everyone, you know, I've been mentioning, use your reaction icon, share with Dushan your appreciation. And as you do that, I'm now going to turn the floor over to Sheila. Sheila, hey, good to have you here. Hi, how's everyone? I'm Sheila Edens Brown, and I'm with, with Paul, Toastmasters of Palos Heights. I'm the VPE. And I'm here because I want to be a not only a better club member, but also as the club officer. So anything that can move me to that next level, I'm for it. Awesome. That is wonderful, Sheila. And thank you for letting us know that you and Paul belong to the same club. I love that power pair that is going on for today. I think each of you will not only receive something that'll be beneficial for you individually, yet for your club co collectively. So this is fantastic. Sheila, thank you again for being present. Hey, Irina, good to have you here as well. Go ahead and let everyone know, Irina, what club do you represent and what brought you here today? Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for having me here. I am representing the Linda Morill Toastmasters. It's a Northern Trust Club uh, from Chicago District 103. I am here to learn how to make my club better and keep it afloat in these difficult times. Wow, I appreciate that, Irina, and I like what you said, keeping it afloat during the difficult time. I think a lot of clubs, that phrase resonates with them because they are experiencing some of the same concepts, and that is making sure we don't lose the clubs that we're belonging to. We want them to remain afloat, and today's session, I think, can give the leaders of the club some ways to consider how to manage the club. Therefore, Irina, thank you so much for being here today. I'm using my reaction icon to share my appreciation. Next up is Tanya Cook. Hey, Tanya Cook, I think I owe you an email response. Forgive my tardiness on that. Yeah, Tanya, go ahead and take the floor right now. Let us know what club you're representing and what brought you here today. Okay, thank you so much for having me. I, I, I really feel honored, okay, <laughs> to be among so many big shots, all right? My name is Tanja Cook and I represent World of Masters. I've been a member uh, for about six weeks now and um, I believe this is the, the second um, webinar series of yours that I have attended. And the main purpose is to well, I'm, I'm interested in how Toastmasters uh, International functions and, the, and um, to find out a little bit more of the types of services they offer, you know, and how I can benefit from them. Um, 
because it took me about eight years to get here. So I'm here now and I'm all in and I'm all open. Okay, thank you. Thanks again for having me. <laughs> oh, you are so welcome, Tanja. And thank you so much for sharing that. The fact that you are open, you are like a sponge right now, taking everything yeah. in. You're learning quite a bit. And you're right. We have had you as a guest for previous sessions in the past. And what you'll learn today, you'll not only be able to use now in the environment that you're in, you'll also be able to use it for your future. Because you know, we told you last time, we see you as a club leader and as a district leader at some point. So oh th th this is good. <laughs> okay. This is good. It sure is. <laughs> yeah. Thanks again for sharing, Tanja. Thank you. You're welcome. Awesome. Another familiar face that I know has been with us for previous sessions is Coretta. Coretta, go ahead and let us know what club you're representing and what brought you to this session today. Okay. I'm from. HHS Toastmasters Club number 1279802. Well, I'm here because I saw the word success. <laughs> so for me, that word may, brung me here today. And I just really want to find out that if I'm ever part of a committee, I want to have be successful in that. So that's why I'm here today, really to learn about being successful as an executive committee member. Fantastic. And Coretta, you definitely have been positioning yourself just like Tanja. Both of you put yourselves into the environments where you're learning, you're taking in new information. I believe today's session, Coretta will also give you information that you can use now as a member, as well as for the future when you are a club leader as well. Thank you for being present for today's session. And everyone, feel free to use whichever one of your favorite reaction icon you want to use in order to recognize Coretta. And of course, I've been saying familiar faces. Don Williams is in the house. Don and I had the opportunity of serving as the first trio members for District 103. I used to nickname him the Club Growth Director when he served as Club Growth Director in the first year when I was District Director. And Don, I know, he, he understands executive committees and all of that because of his leadership at the club level and even at the district level. Yet I know Don is here for a particular reason. Don, can you let everyone know what club you're representing today and also what brought you here? I'm just here for moral support. Um, I'm a part of several clubs and I don't think we have time to go, to go down the list of which clubs I'm a part of. <laughs> so I'm just here for moral support. I'm a part of, I'm not trying to brag on myself. I'm a member of 15 clubs currently. I'm just here to support and uh, add any tidbits that I can to add to the, the meeting this afternoon. Fantastic. And I'm glad that Don provided that final comment. He said, adding any tidbits, because I was going to mention, Don, it's always great having you in the room. More than likely, I'm going to ask for your thoughts and comments in certain segments of today's session. Therefore, thank you for being open to adding in your tidbits and for being here for moral support as well. Fantastic. Oh, <laughs> You're welcome. Everyone, I was also thinking about Don saying he belongs to 15 clubs. I think he has us all beat on that. <laughs> yes, fantastic. Well, here's the great thing about all of us being here together. We're going to explore the idea of the executive committee where we have the opportunity of learning some additional insight and nuances about the club executive committee, and then we'll get the chance to role play, test out some of the ways in which a club can host or have a club executive committee meeting. The length of time that you have it or the number of times that you can have a club executive committee meeting will really be up to your club. Yet for now, what I would like to do is to make certain that I walk us through some of the logistics. And as I say logistics, hmm, 
what I'm really doing is making sure I can get my logistical screen in order here. Fantastic. If you are able to actually see my screen and you can see the phrase club executive committee, go ahead and give me a reaction icon of a thumbs up. That will let me know from a logistical standpoint, technology is working. Good. Thank you for those thumbs up coming up. Thank you for that acknowledgement. What I am using right now, everyone, is one of the resources that Toastmasters International provides to every club leader, and that is the electronic version of the club leadership handbook. I say Toastmasters is one of the few organizations that I've ever belonged to that gives you a manual for just about everything that you do in the organization. They used to provide the club leadership handbook as a hard copy resource. Maybe it was two years ago. It could have also been three years ago. It has definitely been less than five years ago, meaning they stopped providing it as a hard copy. They only now provide it as an electronic version. Therefore, when you become a club officer, when Toastmasters International receives the information that you've become a club officer, they then send you and all of the other club officers a special email, and it's usually uh, labeled club leader letter, I believe. The club leader letter gives you the access to everything. And this, when I say everything, I mean, they want you to know exactly all the resources you have at your disposal from Club Central to the uh, bylaws and the protocols of the organization, and of course, the Club Leadership Handbook. Right now, since our conversation is centered around the Club Leadership Handbook, or I should say the Club Executive Committee, I am positioned on the page of the Club Leadership Handbook that talks about that committee. The Club Executive Committee is described here as a committee that exists or consists of all eight, and notice they're saying eight club officers. Some people don't realize the immediate past club president is the eighth officer of a club. We typically only think clubs have seven club officers. And that's because we focus so much on getting the seven club officers trained in any given year that we forget about the person who had been the president in the previous year. Now, this description lets us know the club president, vice president education, vice president of membership, the vice president of public relations, club secretary, club treasurer, sergeant at arms, and the immediate past club president all make up the executive committee. The club president serves as your chair. The current president of your club will be the chair of the club executive committee. Last year's president, meaning the immediate past club president, is basically an advisor. Last year's club president is going to advise and guide this year's club president. Therefore, if any of you have ever been a club president before, you will remember after your term ended, the next year's term had a brand new club president and you pretty much advised and guided when needed. And you typically followed the lead of whoever the club president was at the time in order to know how much involvement you would have as the immediate past club president. Yet do recognize from the description of the club executive committee, they let us know that this committee is working as a team, even the club the immediate past club president, that is, even that individual is still working as part of the team, although they are more as an advisor and a guider, guider, if you will, they pretty much are still a part of the team. Yet the seven club officers are the ones that are primarily working as a team, they're managing the business of the club, they're handling the administrative affairs of the club, they are the ones that are going to have access to Club Central. I love how Paul and Sheila 
belongs to the same club. Each of them have a different leadership role for their club. And both of them have access to Club Central on the Toastmasters International website. Club Central is a resource just like the Club Leadership Handbook that all club officers are able to use. As a matter of fact, let me know inside of the chat box. I mentioned Club Central. Give me an idea of what you've been able to do with Club Central this year. Let me know inside of the chat box. Give me an example of something you've done with Club Central this year. I'm opening my chat box. That way I'll be able to see your responses come in. Good, Koshal. Yep, looking at your club's official roster, knowing exactly how many members are in the club. That's exactly where you will find that information, the roster. Good point. Paul, yep, you're right. The stats and the data, you're able to look and learn at the information there with the club central and Sheila you're also the roster as well looking at that club roster knowing exactly how many members are in the club that are considered to be active even how many members are still on the list for your club who may not have yet paid any dues so club central will still let you know who those individuals are as well Don that's a good one Posting club events. Yeah, that is now a new feature with Club Central as of this year. And I'm glad everyone that Don mentioned on Club Central, he was able to post club events. The two events that I know for sure you're posting on Club Central now is the fact that you can let Toastmasters International know when you are hosting a youth leadership program as a club, you can also let Toastmasters International know when you host an open house for your club. Yes, open houses we know is how we can recruit new members. Toastmasters International is really curious in knowing if your clubs are hosting those open houses. It's great to know that they now have that as a feature. Don, thank you for pointing that out. Oh, good point, Irina. If I have the opportunity in this segment, we'll take an opportunity to view that, that Club Central feature. Yet it is there. When you log in for Club Central, it on the dashboard where all the options are, you'll see something that says Club Events. That may not be the exact phrase, yet if you look and just browse at the options, it'll be pretty obvious as to which uh, section it is, which feature it is. You click on it and it'll walk you through exactly what you're posting. Yet youth leadership and open houses are the two events that you can post there. Fantastic. Thank you, everyone. I am looking for my reaction icon to provide you with acknowledgement of your interaction with Club Central. Notice that with the executive committee, as Toastmasters International says here in the leadership handbook, your officers, the seven club officers, have gr been granted access to Club Central. That means your sergeant at arms can access Club Central. Your treasurer, your secretary, your VPPR, Vice President of Public Relations, can access Club Central. And of course, we know the vice president of education usually lives in Club Central because that's the one that's putting in the education awards. Yet vice president of membership, VPM, as well as the president has access to Club Central as well. We want Club Central access, especially for base camp managers. The vice president of education, the club president and the club secretary, we definitely want them to have access to Club Central because they can submit awards for the individuals that have completed pathways of projects. So again, all seven club officers have access to Club Central. Now let's look a little bit more at the information regarding the executive committee meetings themselves. We know that your club officers are handling the business of your club, managing the membership, handling the administrative side of things, getting training in order to make certain that the club can be meeting the goal of having a quality club environment. 
you want to get an opportunity with all seven officers or even the eight officers. Remember, we can still have the immediate past president involved. We want to get in the habit of meeting on a regular basis to manage the business of the club, to discuss the business of the club, and to be able to take care of any of the affairs that are coming up. Some clubs executive committees are going to meet twice a month. Some of them might meet more than that. Yet typically we hear that clubs are meeting monthly, or I should say the club executive committee is meeting monthly. However frequently your committee meets is really up to your leaders. Your club might recognize that in the past, every third Monday of the month was the day dedicated to your club officers to get together face to face and meet for two hours. Yet now that we're virtual, it might have become the third Saturday of the month where it's virtual for one hour on Zoom. Who knows what the process is for all the clubs yet recognize as the leadership handbook says, the frequency, that's the decision up to the club. You make that determination, yet you do want to make sure you're meeting, especially in the beginning of the club year, so that way you can finish that club success plan, you can work on the budget, and you really can lay the foundation for the club year. If your club officers don't meet at all, it's really hard to navigate the success of your club throughout the club year. So how many of your clubs so far have actually met with your executive committee. If you have, let me know inside of the chat box that yes, your club's executive committee has already met at least once so far. Good. And notice I mentioned meeting at least once. Good, Irene, I like that every month. Yeah, Paul, I love that at least once it has occurred, yes. Club executive committee meetings, like I said, if you can meet the first time in July or August, it helps to set the tone for the year. Some clubs executive committees are going to meet every single month, simply due to the nature of the club. My home club, the Wrightwood Ashburn Overcomers Way oh, Toastmaster Club, we typically meet as an executive committee once a month. We say that we have so much that's going on that we typically meet once a month. That way we can be planning for two months in advance. How your club meets again is up to you. Another lesson that the Club Leadership Handbook teaches us regarding the club executive committee is the fact that it lets us know our members can attend those meetings. Club members who do not serve on the executive committee are welcome and encouraged to attend the meetings as silent observers. However, guests and non-members are not allowed to attend a meeting. Think about it from the standpoint in your clubs when your clubs are doing the club business meeting. Your club officers in a club meeting typically are giving officer reports in the business meeting segment of your weekly or your bi-weekly meetings. Your guests are welcome to stay for that business meeting segment, or they are informed that they are more than welcome to leave at that point. Usually the business meeting of the club is for the club members. That is why they mention here that your guests or non-members will not attend an executive committee meeting. Yet all of your members are invited. When your club's executive committee has set a meeting, announce it to your club members. Let your club members know when it's happening, where it's happening, and the fact that they are invited to attend. Yet notice the encouragement is non-executive committee members, even though they may be Toastmaster members of our clubs, they are attending that meeting as silent observers. That is a good point to take into account. Oh, thanks, Irene. I'm glad that's good advice. Yeah. We are looking for leaders every year. I think sometimes as an executive committee, we forget those opportunities to plant seeds or to drop those seeds, start nurturing future leaders. It's always great to invite the other club members, and even if they're committee members, let them know that they can attend. 
Now, I want to mention this last part here that you're noticing with the club leadership handbook, and it's talking about a majority and as a quorum. Just like with the business at the district level, with the business at the annual conference, at the business for the council meeting in the fall, basically a quorum is needed. I talked about various events that we have at the district level, yet in the club environment, we still need a quorum to conduct business of the club. And I like the fact that Toastmasters International lets you know the majority of your club executive committee constitutes a quorum for the transaction of business for your club. Therefore, if your club officers are not able to attend an executive committee meeting, then you want to make certain the meeting is rescheduled until you know you'll be able to have a quorum. I know my club faced that just recently. The day of the meeting, and we have a standing meeting, the first Wednesday of every month, for some reason in November, everyone's schedule changed at the last minute. And by the time we showed up for the executive committee meeting, we did not have a quorum. We did not have a quorum. And the decision was made, let's cancel tonight's meeting, let's reconvene next month as we typically will, yet let's make sure that we're able to know what's going to be on the agenda to discuss because we need a quorum in order to make some decisions. And one of the business meeting ideas that was at hand was to do a holiday party in December. <laughs> so not having a quorum really prevented us from being able to move forward to present the idea as we were thinking we needed to for the members. So you do want your club executive committee members to understand a quorum is needed and that's a majority. So that means if you have seven club officers, you're really looking for four of them to be present. The immediate past club president is seen as the advisor. So we typically don't count them in the quorum unless, and I will say this because there's always a different habit for some clubs. Some clubs, their immediate past president is always a part of the executive committee. In that case, you're going to count them toward that quorum. But really, quorum is based off of the president, VPM, VPE, VPPR, secretary, treasurer, and sergeant at arms, those seven. All right, I've gone through some of the preliminary information background details about the club executive committee. Let me pause here and ask the question, what questions do you have for me? Are there any questions that have come up for you that you would like to ask me in this moment? If so, feel free to use the raise hand reaction icon to let me know, and that way you can have the floor. Go ahead, Koshal. Yes, uh, you mentioned uh, that the quorum is generally considered to be the first seven officers, but if the immediate past president is there, that they can be counted as the quorum. So say that there's a, uh, a club officer meeting in which there are only four officers and one of them is the immediate past president. So would that count as a, a quorum that uh, allows them to I... conduct business? Mm, you know, Kaushal, here's what I would say. It depends upon the habit of what happens with the immediate past club president. I'm thinking in my club, the immediate past club president is typically not a part of the executive committee meetings. Therefore, if the individual happened to be there that day, made the fourth officer, if you will, at the meeting, yet they were really not their habit really isn't that they are part of the process, we wouldn't count them. We would still say we need a quorum. We would still reschedule the meeting. Oh, However, oh. if in your club for EPA, that's a part of the process. It's a standing um, habit. It's always the immediate past club president is present. Then yes, we can consider the immediate past club president as part of the quorum. So okay. that's why I said sometimes the habits will change. Some people will say, well, Cassandra, I know what it says here, but this is what we do in our club. If that's the habit, the immediate past club president is so ingrained in the fabric of your executive committee, I don't oppose them being considered as a part of the quorum. Yet okay. I do recognize what international says here. Okay, thank you. 
Yeah, you're quite welcome. And I love that question. And thank you for asking. And I love that question too, Kosher, because it allows for the flexibility of your club to still have the immediate past club president be a part of the process. Awesome. I am looking through the gallery. I am double checking to make certain I don't see any other hands being raised. Are there any additional questions that you may have about what I've covered so far? Or are there any comments that you want to make? Yeah, Don, good point. Yep, you can include it in your club bylaws. That's a very good point. I'm glad you mentioned that, Don. Absolutely. Yeah, so Kosho, that's right. If you want your immediate pass if you want your immediate past club president to be a part of the quorum, as Don is mentioning, your club bylaws can include that. Yes. And Don, thank you. Thank you so much for bringing up the bylaws. We forget that the bylaws exist and they give us some of that flexibility to bring in more of that authenticity to our clubs. Yeah. Tanja, go ahead. I see your hand is raised. I know you're still on mute. Therefore, if you're speaking, we don't yet hear you. There you go. Okay. I'm not quite sure if this uh, pertains to what we're talking about, but I just wanted to know what is your succession process for if the current club president is no longer available to serve their term out? Hmm. Great question. Typically, the process for a succession begins in March. You begin to ask your club members who's interested in serving as a club leader for the next year. You have a nominating committee, which is actually led by the immediate past club president. That individual serves as the chair of the nomination committee. They look for two or three additional people to serve on that committee with them. They get that committee together in March. That's the typical idea, start in March, putting together your nomination committee, your or I think they are now calling it the club leadership committee. So it's some, similar to the district leadership committee, which is the DLC. So now we call the clubs committee, the CLC, club leadership committee. Your immediate past club president will serve as that particular chair. Them and two other members are going to talk to all the members of the club and find out who's interested in serving in, as an officer, which officer roles they might want to serve in. And then they put together what is called the slate. The slate is presented at your April meeting, whichever meeting that you meet in for April. So whatever your first meeting is in April, the slate is presented, and that way your club members know who's interested, which roles they're interested in, and then they're preparing themselves for the election in May. Your first club meeting in May is when you want to elect your new club leaders. Now, Sandra, I chuckled because usually if that process is followed, the person who's serving as your club president right now won't be your club president next year. Usually, if we follow it that early, we're able to find volunteers to serve as club president. The club leadership handbook also recommends that the president not serve as a success, you know, as their own successor, if you will. So that means if you're serving this year, Tanja, as president, you wouldn't be serving next year. The leadership handbook does not want club presidents being the same year after year. They want the, that leadership role to actually change. Yet, does it happen in clubs? Yeah, it does. Yet, if you start in May looking for successors, present the slate in April, and then vote on those leaders in May, by the end of May, Toastmasters International will have a brand new slate of leaders for your club. Does that make sense as far as how that process for successors is done? Yes, but I was specifically asking, for example, um, if one of if the current uh, president um, of the Toastmasters Club got ill and was unable to serve her term out, would it automatically go back to the immediate past president? 
No, not necessarily. It depends upon how your club will handle that. That's typically done in a special election. Uh, sometimes your clubs will ask the immediate past president if they can do it, but it's not a guarantee that that will be the individual who will do that. Okay, okay, thank you. You're quite welcome. And Tanja, sometimes what will happen is leaders who are already in a position might serve in dual roles. So you might have the person who is currently your vice president of education become also the president too in oh, such wow. a situation. So it really does depend upon the nature of your club, the leaders of your club, what the dynamics are of your membership. Most times when that happens, that's a very special situation. Your club leaders and members will make the best decision for your club. A lot of times the immediate past club president wants to stay away from the presidency role so much, they are not <laughs> going to be available for you to even ask them that question. So who knows? <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Oh, you're quite welcome. And thank you for the question. Coretta, thank you for your comment inside of the chat box. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Not knowing that, I love that comment that you made about not knowing that members who do not serve on the executive committee could attend the executive committee meetings. Yes, it's wonderful for them to be able to see the behind the scenes, if you will, of the club management process. So yeah, and thanks, Dushan, you're right. <laughs> I see how you stress, Dushan, they can attend silently, silently, yes, yet they can be in attendance. Good observation. Now, speaking of being in attendance, let's have an opportunity to actually practice here. Let me stop sharing my screen. I would like to actually do a mock opportunity of an executive committee meeting. Irina, I'm looking at your comment that came inside of the chat box. You said, you did not know either, and you have updated the invitation for next year. I like that. Good. Yeah, get them in the new year thinking about it. And again, March is the time to start looking for successors. If you have individuals that are currently serving as committee members for your officers, like the education committee helps the vice president of education, the membership committee helps the vice president of membership. The public relations committee helps the vice president of public relations. And then the hospitality committee helps the sergeant at arms. Can the other officers have committees? Yes, your treasurer can have a finance committee that helps. Your secretary can have a historian committee that helps. I mean, it, it really is up to your committees or your club, I should say, the committees that you put into place. I just happened to mention the top four, the ones that Toastmasters International refers to in the club leadership handbook, education committee, membership committee, public relations committee, and hospitality committee. Those committees help four of your club officers currently. You may have people on those committees that can transition into those roles naturally for next year, yet you will want to confirm with them in March, are they interested in becoming the leader for that a leadership role for that officer role? So if they're on the hospitality committee, are they interested in becoming sergeant at arms? If they're on the membership committee, are they interested in becoming your vice president of membership? March is the time to ask the questions, have the conversations, and then that way, April, you'll have a slate of successors. All right, I am reviewing the chat box again, making certain I didn't miss any questions or any comments. And it looks as if we are all good. Okay, I'm rubbing my hands together because I'm getting excited. This is good time to do a demonstration. Let's go ahead and pretend that we are in a, an opportunity for a club executive committee meeting. Now, I am simply going to randomly select a few of you to be an officer for the executive. I am going to start with the role of Sergeant at Arms and Coretta. I am going to ask you to be the pretend Sergeant at Arms at this meeting. The next officer role is going to be the role of treasurer. The treasurer, I'm going to ask 
Tanja to serve as treasurer for this mock demonstration. After treasurer, let's talk about the club secretary. Irina, I would like for you to serve as the secretary of this mock demonstration. Let's move now into the role of vice president of public relations. For vice president of public relations, Koshu, I want you to take the VPPR representation. Moving from vice president of public relations, let's now go into the role of vice president of membership. Dushan, I want you to serve as the mock VPM. Sheila, I think you mentioned you were VPE, I want you to stay in the role of VPE, represent our Vice President of Education for this mock meeting. And therefore, Paul, I would like for you to serve as the president of the team for tonight's mock meeting. Now, as I am mentioning, this is a mock meeting. I am simply going to give each of you, or I'm going to, let me phrase it this way. What I am going to do is put myself on mute. I am simply going to allow a mock meeting to be demonstrated based off of your thinking, your knowledge, your flow. I am not going to interrupt, ask questions, make comments or anything until we have had at least, let's say, let's have at least five to seven minutes of demonstration. Now, we know in a real executive committee meeting, you may end up going longer than seven minutes. Yet, I'm just thinking about the length of time that we would give a speech, five to seven minutes. I'll time it on my end. And when that seven minute time frame has occurred, I'm going to pause you where you are, and then I'll move us to the next step. Does that sound fair enough, everyone? If so, feel free to give me that reaction icon of a thumbs up. Awesome. Now your club president is going to facilitate this mock meeting, which means everyone, you're going to be listening to Paul. You'll be taking your guidance from him. And Paul, I'll pause us. Um, I may say done in the chat box, or I might verbalize it. However I do it, you'll know when that's, <laughs> and I love that. He said pretender president. <laughs> So Paul is the pretender president, and he'll get that seven-minute cue um, once that time frame is up. Yet yeah, I am now putting myself on mute, everyone. Enjoy doing the mock executive committee meeting. And thank you, Cassandra. And the, the, the best way to uh, give me the, the time's up is to, to uh, speak it. I, am, I don't tend to look at the chat. That when, works. Um, when we're... Uh, in this little gallery view. But I'm really fortunate to have my, my immediate colleague, Sheila Edens Brown, and I am gonna present our, I'm gonna call it our current goal or our current most um, urgent goal to our little pretender meeting here as reinvigorating our membership. How, what can we do to reinvigorate our membership? And by what I mean by that is to uh, attract new members and accelerate our members taking on speaking roles. So speaking more with more members. I look at that as two key metrics that we can measure our, uh, the, the, I'll call it the performance of our club. And I'm gonna present our current state as hospice. I loved Lance Miller's term last week. He said, we had a choice of having our club remain on hospice, Toastmasters hospice. We're gonna, keep our members comfortable until the club closes, or we're gonna grow and become a, be a vital club. So with that goal to attract new members and accelerate our members through the program, I am gonna look for suggestions as to how it is that we go about doing that. And Sheila and I are not new to this, to this, uh, I'll call it our inquiry. 
but I'm going to look to Sheila to get the ball rolling, and then I'm going to go through uh, each of our each of our officers for your input on those two sub goals of our primary goal, which is to become a vital club, a best in class club, and how do we achieve that by attracting more members and by accelerating our, accelerating our members through their educational program. Mm -hmm. So well, Sheila, Paul, I'm gonna start oh. with um, re, um, getting our members to speak more. What One of the things that I feel that we can do is that if I take the initiative to meet with each of our club members and speaking of going through the whatever level they're on and looking at how many speeches is needed. And I will start talking with them and working with them to schedule these speeches. So we're not looking for each meeting that we are looking for people to speak, but we'll start putting them on the calendar ahead of time and working with them. And then also looking at the number of speeches that they have, how can we fit every, the club members in each club member so that we can complete so many in a certain amount of time. So I think that would be one of the best ways for us to do that and to look for that and looking at possibly new members would be first of all, our members speaking to others and being, being about the word of mouth and letting them know what's going on along with we need to be more active on social media, which means that possibly not only the BPPR, but each of us taking ownership of our own social media and talking about Toastmasters, the things that we do. And of course, I would like to see us using it, using pictures of little clips, a little bit more video clips on those sites too, working with them. And I'm not, I know that there are a lot of other ideas that others can also speak on too. Well, that's three great ideas. And I'd like to skim off the top two. Taking the initiative, you, you, you suggested you take the initiative to speak with members and get them scheduled on an agenda. Speaking with the members about their goals and get them scheduled on, on our, the agenda to speak. So that is a, I'm gonna call it the number one. And then the second one is uh, attracting mem new members with word of mouth. And I think Sheila, that flows and that is a, uh, I would say an organic outcome of getting members excited about speaking and because it becomes good customer. They're, they're, it's good customer, uh, uh, outcome, so they would they would spread the word. I'm going to move to Dushan, VP of membership. Well, add to, the, add to Sheila and tell us, talk to us. Well, at the last meeting that we had, we had three guests, and we had three wonderful guests. One of the guests happened to be a minister, and I think that um, I, I contacted them all already i got their information and welcome welcome them to the club i'm suggesting that they come visit the club at least one more time uh be, before they really dive into being a member but i think that we ought to really work on these three if we can get these three members in our in our club that would that would increase our membership up and i think that um including the really including working on the the minister that came we can um think about him helping us bringing members from his parish in because he's a minister of that, of that sort. So I did that. I sent out those three and I looked at our list of um, people who had come to other meetings before and I, I am putting together a list and a memo to send to them and ask them to come to our first meeting of the year in January. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, I love the idea of cultivating and nurturing and shepherding. That was the point you made. You're gonna you're gonna get back in touch with them. You're shepherding that guest. It's a light touch too that you suggested. Hey, come and check out another you know a, a, another meeting. So you're not pushing them in, you're pulling them or showing them the way in. But I love the idea, Dushan, of cultivating and nurturing and shepherding the guests. 
every single member was a guest one day. That's where it starts. So I, I, I love that shepherding. I mean, I'm going to call it shepherding the, 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 the guests. I'm going to move. Thank you very much, Deshaun. I'm going to move to our VP of PR, Kostrel. Yes, I think it could help if we publish a newsletter. What I would like each of my fellow officers to do is contribute an article that I can put in the newsletter. It can be an article about a speech you did, an article about using pathways effectively, about ideas for speeches, or anything regarding public speaking or leadership. And if you can get me those articles soon, I can have it in the next issue of the newsletter, which I will distribute to club members and to the local community to build interest. And I would also like each of my fellow officers to contribute to something that we can put on social media, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, etc., to increase our visibility and show the world how active we are and how valuable it is to be a member of our club. Let me ask you, Krishal, are, are you also in charge of the incoming inquiries that hit our website? I don't believe so. I think any incoming inquiries are directed to our VP of membership. Okay. Okay. Well, good. I love, and from uh, uh, the, the role of VPPR, I love the idea of a newsletter. Are you going to be the one that is in charge of actually producing it? Yes. Once I have all the articles ready, I will produce a newsletter and distribute it. Very cool. Cool. Thank you very much. And I'd like to move to our secretary, Irina. Talk to us, Irina. Hello, everyone. This is a great topic. And um, I would like to, to say that the letter is good and um, Thank you, Kushal, for that. And uh, actually, the good idea is to putting on the social media, um, nurturing and cultivating the guests is also a great idea. But I would like to propose to reach out to the people who we don't know yet. To um, maybe if we can craft a letter about our club and send it out to, to the social media, like you said, um, maybe that would be a good, good idea. Mm -hmm. Thanks, I, I can see the red flag, so I just, I will stop talking. Oh, no, I love, I, I love the idea of reaching out. I think that is a powerful tool. And I think it's become, I think it could become more effective if we had a target audience identified. And uh, Sh Sheila and I, uh, from our, our club, and I'll just add that as our experience, uh, we targeted the faith leaders that have churches and there's one mosque within a mile of our Toastmasters. And we did exactly, we did exactly that, Irina. We, 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 composed a letter, delivered it to each of the 15 churches in one mosque within a mile. And, oh, good. Uh, yes, I remember. Uh, I remember you were telling that, and I love that idea. Well, the, here's, here was an unintended consequence, is that our, our invitation in the letter was to the, 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 the minister or the imam to come to our club on a specific date uh, by invitation and deliver our, we call it the guest invitation. So of the 15, we had uh, 10 that agreed to do so. And we've had, I think, six that have come into the club and they did the guest in, uh, invitation. 
And not so much from a membership standpoint. I don't know that we've attracted one member yet. However, this is a seed and it will take some time to grow and continue the program. However, they added a great dimension. And Deshaun was one of the beneficiaries of a meeting where we did have a, a, a guest invitation. They added a dimension to the meeting at the very beginning that really enriched the, the, the night for everybody. So that was unintended consequence. We didn't, we weren't really looking for that. We're looking for memberships, as you said, uh, uh, Arena, to get the word out to somebody specific. So our time is up. Then we're gonna go back to Cassandra Lee. First of all, let me find my reaction icon for you all. <laughs> This was fantastic. I tell you in five to seven minutes, and I actually gave you a few extra minutes. I put some additional time on there. So it was really about uh, 10 to 12 minutes that you guys were able to do this. I liked what I observed. And what I'm doing right now is I'm going back to the leadership handbook. And I am now going to scroll to a category that talks about the components of a club meeting. Now, I want you all to use the chat box. You can share with me verbally or in the chat box. Tell me your perspective on what elements you think were actually covered in today's mock meeting. Now, as you'll notice, the components of a club executive committee meeting are one, the agenda meaning you're presenting information about the meeting minutes of the last meeting, officers are giving reports, you're talking about active membership and you're reviewing membership and education activities. There is an agenda in essence. Procedure, procedure may be discussed in your executive committee meeting and notice when they mention procedure, they talk about keeping the meeting organized and productive using parliamentary procedures. The club president sets the tone and serves as a role model for keeping the order and showing respect for other committee members. And that's part of procedure. Pace is making certain that things can move along. It's not long-winded and drawn out. You're making sure fast pace is kept and the meeting is short and you're saving the inventive problem solving and creative thinking for the end of the meeting, if you will. So that's pace. Participation is another component. Participation is requiring that every committee member reports or otherwise contributes at the meeting. Review is a component of your executive committee meeting. There may be times when you have to review your annual goals or the progress of your distinguished performance reports or that club success plan. That's all tied to review. Forward thinking, that's where you're discussing items to be on the agenda for future meetings. And then last but not least is creativity. Not getting stuck in the, we have always done it this way mentality. You're invigorating and encouraging your fellow members to think creatively and to propose new ideas. I know that the chat box has been moving and I'm wondering from your perspective, which of the components would you say our mock meeting represented? Agenda, review, procedure, participation, for thinking, pace, creativity, any of those, all of those, which of those would you say? I'm simply going to pause for a moment to give you an opportunity to review again. And let me make certain I go back here. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so we can see all seven of them at the same time. Yeah, I'm liking what I'm seeing, the pace, the participation, forward thinking, the creativity. Yeah, these are good, good representations, absolutely. Oh, wonderful. I'm also noticing our secretary put some comments inside of the chat box. She put the meeting minutes basically in the chat box. Irena, you go. <laughs> I love this. Fantastic. She did a fantastic job representing what was discussed. The meeting minutes went out immediately. Yes. Dushan, thanks for your comments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the review, the creativity. Coretta, thank you for that. 
I recognize not all of our officers were able to speak because of the limited amount of time that we had in the mock demonstration. However, I think our president did a great job with moving you through the agenda. First and foremost, I want you to understand, Paul, I have to commend you for coming into this mock moment, having a focal point for your meeting agenda. And I say for me, as I was observing the meeting agenda or what happened in this moment, I actually saw what was being discussed, not as the report segment of the executive committee meeting, I saw it more as the new business segment of the business meeting. Here's why I say that. Let me scroll to the mock agenda. Well, I shouldn't say mock agenda. You may have noticed I have scrolled to the page in the club leadership handbook that actually gives you a sample agenda that you can use. They mentioned that when you set a very specific agenda with target times, that tends to help. Yet this agenda, is set where you'll have plenty of time for all of your executive committee members to speak, to share, and for you to discuss reports, old business, which they call unfinished business, as well as new business. I saw this mock meeting as the representation of new business. My assumption was president had already called the meeting to order. The secretary, Irina, had already read through the meeting minutes from the previous meeting, and the executive officers had voted on approving those meeting minutes. That was already done. The officers, starting with the sergeant at arms, had already delivered their reports. Now, notice at the 715 through 745 hour, so that's approximately 30 minutes you're having your club officers at your meeting sharing reports for their role, yet you go in reverse. The president doesn't deliver a report first. It's always the sergeant at arms that does. Sergeant at arms is going to report on anything they and the hospitality committee have planned. And then you go from sergeant at arms to the treasurer, from the treasurer to the secretary, from the secretary to the VPPR, from VPPR to VPM, from VPM to VPE, and from VPE to the president. Your officer reports are delivered in reverse ranking order. Your reports, of course, <laughs> and I'm chuckling because that's where your meetings can be really meaty, depending upon how long your officer reports are. A lot of times, executive committees think that really is the meeting for an executive committee. And that's only a small part of it. If you spend a lot of time on reports, you won't really have the time to deal with any unfinished business or in our mock presentation, the new business, the new business. Paul, again, I love the fact that you came in with the focal point. You knew that you wanted to focus on how can we grow our club? How can we make our club a vital club? What can we do to make sure that we are accelerating our members through the program? And then you were purposeful in who you targeted for comments, starting with your VPE, going into the conversation with your VPM and moving from there into your VPPR, those were good directions in which to have. Now, I knew we were going to run out of time, so I was glad that you called on your secretary and the secretary confirmed the comments that were made by the VPPR and the VPM and, and it even provided another direction to go. We didn't quite hear from the treasurer and we didn't hear from the sergeant at arms, yet it would have been wonderful to actually have, if I had given more time for us to have heard their perspective on this focal point as well. Yet I know they were positioned. They weren't sure if they were gonna have that moment, but I could tell that they were ready just in case they needed to speak. Yet all of you had the chance to observe what happened. Would you agree with me that our mock meeting today focused primarily on new business or would you consider it to be part of the reports or unfinished business? Yeah, yep, the new business. 
yeah new mm -hmm. yeah and it was part partly reports too right partly reports yet primarily it was new and what we heard from each of the officers that had the opportunity to speak you could hear their expertise and when i say expertise meaning you could hear their role expertise come out in their answers vppr by the way that was a fantastic job that you did with the off the cuff questions that your president asked regarding the incoming inquiries from the club website and i love the fact that your thought was and i could hear your wheels are turning kosher and it was thinking well would that really go to the vppr or would it be the vpm <laughs> And the answer that you provided deferred that over to the vice president of membership. And I thought that was so realistic. Again, depending upon the nature of everyone's club, sometimes it would be the VPPR, yet most times it goes to the vice president of membership. It was an inquiry for guests, basically. Yes, that goes over to the vice president of membership. So great job, Kalshu, for doing that. Yeah. All right, let me stop the screen share here because I want to come back so that way I can see all of you. What are your thoughts? What are your comments? What's your, what are your questions? I'm curious to know what, what, what are your thoughts from this experience? Feel free to use the raise hand feature. I'm also making sure that I review the chat box as well. Go ahead, Paul. Absolutely was uh, not following a, I'll call it a formal meeting structure. I did feel that the focal point or, or focusing on a specific issue would be the quickest way in seven minutes to, to get the most participation across. And we even missed the mark on that by shorting the treasurer and the, second, the sergeant at arms. However, I'd like to either now as a pretend meeting or we just that we made it a, a, a reality meeting, I learned from it. I feel as if it was a worthwhile investment of our nine minutes. Yes, I would agree. You guys got a lot covered there, Paul. And again, you did a fantastic job with how you facilitated. And I appreciated that you allowed your officers to get their comments out and then you were able to move into the next officer, which then they did a fantastic job of not only acknowledging their colleagues comments yet expanding it and and adding to it they didn't necessarily repeat everything we had already heard they brought in their own perspective and i think your leadership with how you allowed them to voice themselves gave them the ability in this moment to actually share their thoughts their ideas and their creativity Yeah, I'm looking here at the chat box. Good, Coretta. I'm glad. Yeah, like you said, you haven't attended an actual executive committee meeting before, yet this was a good opportunity seeing it in a mock performance. Fantastic. <laughs> glad to hear that. Yeah, anyone else with any additional thoughts or comments? I saw inside of the chat box, Dushan, you had some great comments. Irina, thank you for your meeting minutes inside the chat box as well. I must, yeah, I yeah, must admit, um, let's see, I must admit I had a little bit of advanced knowledge of their club because I had just visited their club and my example was an example that really happened so um that was really nice i hope you got that minister in there and those other two people that were uh um possible guests <laughs> yeah uh, and we'll see we'll see it's it, they're they're seeds that are planted and they sometimes they, they take a little time to grow however dushan when you were at our club meeting you had a really great observation in that the, the table topics part of the meeting is great i think we had uh, the majority of the meeting was on table topics and we had one speaker or possibly we had two and you had made the point about the importance of the speeches so i'm putting this out there as a 
uh, a real opportunity for us as a club to get four speakers at every meeting. We got two a month. And ultimately, I'd like to move to four meetings uh, uh, a month at four speakers a meeting for 16 speeches a month times the, the year, 160 speeches a year. Uh, and that's, you, you, that's the goal. That's the goal is to, to and, and I don't know quite how to do it. I'm going to try it tomorrow with a, a presentation uh, to kind of light a fire under the current members. And then with the guests, we have five guests coming in tomorrow. So I'm really going for three new members that come out of that five guests. And uh, I'd like to see each one of them speaking at every meeting. Well, I love that. And even if you pitch it to your club members as a trial basis, maybe it's for the last three months of the year or something like that, maybe they would be more open to it. Yet I like what where you're going with it. Let's see what we can do. Let's increase the number of speaking opportunities. Let's meet more regularly. And if the members buy the idea, roll with it. Paul, that's such a fantastic suggestion. Yes, yes. Hey, Irina, I see your hand is up. Go ahead, Irina. Thank you so much for uh, Cassandra for giving me the opportunity. I would like to say that I want to mention what uh, uh, to Sheila's point. I absolutely loved her proposal, taking initiative to talk to the members and schedule their speeches. I do that, but I would like to do it more. And what I did not know, which I really appreciate, is the word of mouth so to get members excited about speaking. I think it's very powerful. And of course, scheduling speeches uh, to make the club achieve the goals is important. So Sheila, I really appreciate you giving me the opportunity to grow next year. Thank you for your advice. Oh, and thank you, Irina. Thank you for sharing. That was beneficial for you. That example was helpful. And I love the fact that people are thinking, okay, how can we make our clubs better and stronger for next year? And each of you have received fantastic tips. Speaking of tips that came out in the mock meeting, Koshal, thank you so much for recommending officers write an article that can be submitted to the newsletter. I loved when you said, Koshal, that, hey, listen, the article can be written by you about anything you choose. It could be about a speech that you delivered. It could be about using pathways more effectively. Whatever they decide to write about, you would be able to put it inside of the newsletter. Those two recommendations really struck me write about a speech you gave, who hasn't given a speech that they could take their notes and write about as an article, right? That was so easy. And then if they are comfortable with using Pathways, now they, from their user experience, can help teach club members how to use Pathways. And it doesn't have to be a Pathways guru doing it or your vice president of education doing it or any other district leader doing it. Your club members can help to teach one another how to use Pathways. And it starts with your club leadership. So that was another idea that I picked up on. Club leaders, you're going to be looked upon as role models. And in that suggestion, write an article, let's put it in the newsletter, and that's highlighting you as the leader for the club, and it's also helping the club members along the way, and teaching the community, because as you pointed out, Mr. VPPR is now going to be sent out to other people around your community, if you will, so that way you can get guests to come out to your meetings. I was excited about that idea, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> oh, thanks, I'm excited too. Yeah, that was such a great suggestion. Speaking of suggestion, Don, you're absolutely right. Thank you for your comment inside of the chat box. You said it was a great meeting, but it also shows the importance of an agenda. Yeah, so that no nothing or nobody is missed. Absolutely, yes, the timing is important. What my club officers have picked up on and what I recognize this year in particular, our club leaders 
are primarily DTMs and we are seasoned individuals. We've done these leadership roles, some of us multiple times for various clubs, which means we bring in so much information into our reports. We had to institute for our executive committee meetings, which are only once a month for only one hour, we had to institute the process that club officers, you must submit your reports in writing and we need them two days before the actual meeting. So if we're meeting the first Wednesday of every month. By that Monday, Monday before the meeting, all of the officer reports need to be emailed to everyone. So we email one another the officer reports. You have the responsibility of reviewing the officer report. You prep your questions so that way at the officer meeting during the report segment, you ask questions as opposed to the officer coming in and delivering that report. I tell you, it took us about three months this club year before we realized most of our meeting were the officers delivering reports. We were not really getting to unfinished business and we definitely were not touching enough of our new business because the officer reports were too long with the verbiage. Therefore, now that we're going written reports, they get submitted in the actual meeting, you ask questions or you make comments about the officer reports, but we only want reports per officer to be two to three minutes. In two to three minutes, you only had time really to answer any questions. That's been making our officers become more in tune with what's going on with each other because the reports are being reviewed before we get there. And now we're having more time for business, new business to be discussed. And that's our process. Your club might do something different, yet you may have noticed in the leadership handbook, Toastmasters International recommends almost two hours for an executive committee meeting. My club officers this year only have enough time for an hour. So we've had to make some modifications. That's great, Cassandra. That's absolutely great. That's the, uh, in fact, that's the Jeff Bezos uh, rule for meetings is that if you really have something to present at a meeting, it needs to be in writing first and distributed, like you said, two days in advance, and then you deal with the questions at the meeting. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we know the Toastmasters give us that boardroom experience. So, Paul, I'm glad that you brought that up about Jeff Bezos. Yeah. Boardroom experience. We're maximizing our time. So again, Don, thank you so much for your comment about the timing. Speaking of timing, I recognize we are coming to our final few minutes of our session for today. This is our final session of 2021 as well. Wow. <laughs> yeah, are there any additional thoughts or comments or even questions that you have? Yeah, go ahead, Koshal. Yeah, I'd like to comment something that my club does with our meetings is we recognize that people's lives are already filled with meetings and they tend to start on the hour and are often scheduled to last the full hour. Uh, my club gives our officers a bit of a break. We we don't start our meetings right at our office meetings right at noon, but at 1205 so that if people's previous commitments or last a little bit over time, they don't feel rushed to come to our meetings and um, we we end not at one o'clock but 10 minutes before one so that officers uh, can feel you know relaxed and they have plenty of time to, to get to the next commitment and ha having a meeting that only lasts for 45 minutes instead of the full hour forces us to really focus on on what's, what's important I was thinking just that I was like, wow, you guys are really maximizing your timing. You're really focusing in on the meat and potatoes of what's important for that moment. Great information. Kosha, let us know, is your executive committee meeting once a month? Remind me, you may have said that already. Yes, yes, we do meet once a month. Once a month, good. Yeah, a once a month, 45 minute meeting that is highly effective with that time. I love that. Thank you for sharing that format. Anyone else with any comments or any questions that you have? 
Thank you, Cassandra, as always, for leading us to the better clubs. Oh, Very you're... much appreciated. Thank you. You're so welcome, Irina. Thank you. And thank you for being open to what you were learning today. I was loving you lighting up like a bowl of popcorn. I said you were popping like popcorn today. Those ideas that were common, you were putting inside of the chat box your various comments about what resonated with you and how you'll use it. And again, you demonstrated in the mock moment how quickly meeting minutes could be distributed as well. So kudos to you for that. Yeah, I'm reviewing the gallery right now. I'm also double checking the chat box. I'm simply making certain I'm not missing anyone. All right, fantastic. Everyone, I really appreciate you being here for today. This was a fun opportunity to do our executive committee meeting demonstration. I think I may do another one sometime next club year. Who knows how that one will be? We understand that it depends upon what needs to be discussed at an executive committee meeting. The tone will change, or I should say the topics will change and the direction that is taken uh, will be different each and every time. Yet at least you got today the key resource that you'll be able to use that can help to guide you with either uh, finessing the executive committee meetings you're having already or establishing those meetings. Always go to your club leadership handbook. I'm going to make certain that I grab the link. I'm going to put that inside of the chat box for you. That way you'll be able to download that resource. I call the club leadership handbook the Bible for leaders at the club level because it gives us everything that we need to know. And it does talk about the succession information. It does go through some of other resources that you can use as well. And if you pass that link on to your fellow officers for the new year, that will help to keep them committed to using it as a resource for their role. All right, everyone. Well, until 2022, I say have a fantastic remaining part of 2021. Enjoy your holidays that are coming up. Have a safe new year. And until 2022, I'll see you guys again for another demonstration meeting. This time, I think it'll be on Pathways. Let's see what we can do. All right, everyone. See you Thank soon. You very much. Bye. Bye. Happy holidays.